Why, hello, YouTube. This is Baylor Mage again, and uh, I decided to do something just for fun, which was a challenge to make a one single exalt mapper from head to toe on something that was off meta, not done, not part of the top 30 skills on PoE Ninja, and not anything that would be super obvious. So, like, you know, if cold traps didn't happen to make it into the top 30, but it's obvious that cold traps is powerful. That was out too. So nothing obvious, nothing well done everywhere and uh, nothing from the top 30 skills on Peewee Ninja and one exalt from head to toe, including buying gems, everything. We bought every single thing for this character that we needed to either came from a vendor or came from me the one exalt budget and that includes the gear on the animate guardian literally everything from top to bottom so this is an animate weapon chains of command build i went with that because i don't need six links at all and that cuts the price down a bit and uh overwhelming enemies with minions gives you sort of an artificial tankiness which is something that this build kind of lacked on its 1x budget it wasn't incredibly tanky uh, but as you can see, we got it clearing maps, <coughs> and that's pretty decent. Um, we did get it to a uh, theoretical damage output of about 3 million. Um, when I say theoretical, in a perfect scenario, in an absolutely perfect scenario, we're at about 3 million DPS, but most of the time we're closer to 2 to 2.2-ish. 2 .2 it's pretty decently hard to calculate. But the idea of this build is that you have an animate guardian and he is your only minion and when he kills stuff he summons the animate weapons that you see flying around the screen and everything that is linked in the chest is linked to the animate weapons and the animate guardian is linked somewhere else in this instance we just have it in a plus two helmet so it's a pretty interesting playstyle. um it's most reminiscent to the old minion builds like uh summon specters and whatnot because it's very automated we just run around um as you can see we do have to run one of those writhing jar flasks just to get the map started we don't technically have to run that and the animate guardian would eventually kill something on its own but it takes a while and then if you're not running one there'll be no way to maintain animate weapons on any boss ever so it's been a very fun experiment but i do want to say to people there is no situation in which you should try to make a 1x build if you have literally only one single exalt to re-roll your build you're not ready to re-roll yet this was done as just a, an interesting fun challenge for me just to see if i could get a tier 16 mapper everything it needed bought on a single exalt so important that i say everything bought because it means i didn't craft anything either because if i was to use one x to craft stuff with my crafting knowledge i'd probably have five or six or even eight or ten x worth of gear on and i didn't want to do that i wanted to literally buy everything i needed so one thing that was not included in the 1x budget because i already had them and i ran out of money is my flasks and the flasks while not super well rolled are still probably 20c or so each to get the the three gain five charges or gain three charges on use flasks um they're they're 10 to 20 c none of them are the gain sevens that are the you know ones that cost like an x or two but that technically technically that puts us over the one x budget and i've just decided i don't care because it was already such a shoestring that i just didn't count the flasks but all the gems and everything else is counted it's technically slightly more than one x because you've probably got you know maybe 50 maybe 50 chaos in flasks as well so i guess we're Closer to 1.3x Sag. But moving in game. Here we are with our animate guardian boy. He is a big chonky boy. He is taller than me and bigger than me and faster than me. 
Uh, he's wearing a blunderbore chest, which is why he's got the shrines on him. Um, originally, I did have him wearing the gull as well, which while it didn't drop shrines, it did make the shrines that he has more effective on him, which was cool tech, but I ended up replacing it. So as you can see, we only have the one minion. So whenever we start a map, Rising Jar goes down on the ground. He kills them. Animate Guardians pop out. You pop more and more flask usages and more and more anime weapons pop out and then you end up with a small army you run into a map and uh, you run into a pack and they will be i think it's 14 is the maximum amount we'll find out in a moment here because we are a scion pathfinder we are refreshing flask charges quite often so even when we don't kill anything we can maintain our full 14 uh weapons on any single target boss giving us our actual proper uptime on bosses this was able to kill the green and the new green and red bosses whose names i keep forgetting searing ekarch and eater of worlds I, I did kill those um it wasn't particularly fast and the build isn't particularly tanky either so not necessarily a build i'd recommend certainly not on this budget but it does work we did do it and we did come up with some relatively interesting tech that might get used a little bit more on like a real build with a proper budget so we do have 3.1 mil dps and what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to copy this path of building exactly how it is set up because when I make any changes to show you the gear, it breaks the path of building. So first we will copy this exactly how it's set up now. Animate Guardian is a little bit annoying, um, a little bit annoying to set up because in order to set him up, you need to set up an entire gear set for him, which I have done. But before we change to that, you can see we've got 3.1 mil DPS here. Um, that is with his entire gear set up and counting 14 weapons which is a pretty decent amount of damage but you can see our effective hit pull is only 27k it's not incredibly high um as an extra layer of defense we do have the pathfinder node here which does recover four percent of life on flask use of which we do get quite a lot of flask charges and whenever we get hit the three uh, regular flasks gain charges so there's that amount of recovery uh, but we also have guardian so we've got a little bit of recovery reduced flask effect there and some physical damage re reduction um, as well as that that regen 20 percent over one second one every four seconds which is somewhat helpful um, if I was to spend a bunch on it, I would also get Necromancer and then I would either take Necromancer, Guardian or Pathfinder as Forbidden Jewels. Any one of them is fine. And if you, whichever one you take, you just start at the other location because it doesn't really matter if I come out here or here. That makes no difference. It's exactly the same thing. So we could start at either location. Any of those three Forbiddens would have been fine if I was to invest budget into it. Uh, which I didn't this is how our tree looks and also the main reason why we can sustain all of our charges on exactly one of those worm flasks which is flask charges gained one flask charge gained every three seconds two life charges gained every three seconds two mana charges gained every three seconds it is a hybrid flask so it gets both of those so that's another four then we come over here and we get life and mana gain one charge every three seconds from that mastery and one more charge every three seconds from profane chemistry so that added to everything has given us the ability to only run one of these flasks because if i had to run two i would have felt like i was a failure so i'm pretty happy with that however here's our interesting tech and also the reason i saved the path of building early is because as soon as i swap over to the animate guardian everything goes away and it it screws everything up so here's our animate guardians items and this is where it gets a little bit interesting so first and obvious grave bind 
Nearby enemies killed by anyone count as being killed by you instead. My animate guardian is wearing that. So if I kill something or if the weapons kill something, it counts as the animate guardian himself killing them, which is why he maintains 14 weapons all the time. And they very rarely um, have the, the lower level weapons out. Um, quite often while mapping, I'll end up with three or four of the like level 18 versions because the a weapon will kill something while the animate guardian isn't quite close enough. But not really reliable and so i'm not counting that as uptime but we always have the level 20 versions it's great then legacy of fury so the animate guardian is wearing these so he has nearby enemies are scorched and he has the chance when you kill scorched enemies to burn surrounding enemies for four seconds dealing eight percent of the killed enemies life is fire damage per second you may have seen that during the map clearing content because everything my animate guardian is near counts as being killed by him and he's wearing the boots so you get the scorch and you get the scorch explosion and we don't have to do anything for that we are wearing the blunderbore because we were after the cheapest chest that would keep him alive and while there are better options all the better options are more expensive and getting a lesser massive shrine is quite a bit more life for the animate guardian so we went with that so that one's been pretty cool. The next interesting tech is Gale Sight. So Gale Sight cannot inflict freeze or chill. 25% chance to inflict brittle. Now, he doesn't hit that hard with cold damage on his own. And this only applies to the Animate Guardian, not to the weapons that it spawns. Right? The weapons that it spawns are just floating weapons, not weapons equipped with all of this gear so i do not have any brittle while clearing but on any boss i have between two and four percent brittle depending on map mods level of gear etc so it's a little bit of brittle two to four percent isn't a lot but it is something and it was very interesting and again if i was to invest further in this if i was to get like a real weapon and have him dealing you know four or five times as much damage as he is now, which is definitely possible, that would be a relevant brittle. That would be like 10, 12% brittle, and that would be really good. <clears throat> Next, we use the White Wind. Now, it is my understanding that the Animate Guardian automatically passes the Offhand is Empty check, even when it's not empty. So I believe my Animate Guardian is actually getting the Suppress Chance and the Increased Cold Damage. However, I'm not 100% sure on that, but what I am 100% sure on is that the animate weapons don't have a shield. So this was just an averagely rolled one. I couldn't get a good one. This is just a pretty averagely rolled one. But now all of my weapons have suppression and they have the one, the one that I had here has 188% increased cold damage and like an average cold damage roll. Um, you can obviously get a better one than this, but we were very limited on our cost. So... All of the animate weapons count as not having a shield. So they get the benefits of that. They get the benefits of, of having an empty offhand. So that was pretty cool. We did try a few other weapons. Um, we did try the Rebuke of the Val for a buttload of flat damage everywhere. That was not as good. And we also tried the red weapon that's something sacrifice that gives a bunch of frenzy charges the the two-handed one that does fire damage it was pretty much equally as good as this um it was very hard to tell which one was better i ended up going with this one because i thought it was more interesting um but oro's sacrifice was pretty much just as good i believe that in a high like a higher budget version of this like even like five to ten x I would probably be looking at Voidforge. But for now, we're doing that. And then we also have Victario's Charity, one of my favorite shields for minion builds. Um, again, interacting with the gloves nearby enemies killed by anyone count as killed by you. So, chance to grant power charges to nearby allies on kill. This gives us permanent power charges to all minions because all of the kills count as kills by my animate guardian. 
And so he hands out power charges to all the weapons that can then kill quicker, which regenerate power charges. The frenzy charge up time is not great during maps. I most of the time have one or two frenzy charges and almost never three. He does have enough attack speed, however, on a boss to max out frenzy charges. Because again, this shield doesn't get given to the minions. It only gets given to the animate guardian, right? So he's got some attack speed. It's enough. It's enough that on a boss that lasts long enough to get three up, I can generally maintain three frenzy charges on them all, but it's mostly there to give me all the power charges while clearing. Shattering is cool, and we do a lot of that. Um, yeah, so that's all of the interesting mechanics that we decided to use. Um, the rest of the gear in here is incredibly cheap. You might see an ools and then be shocked by the ools in there. Um, it's, I think it might be my most expensive item. It was 20C for a haste has no reservation ools. Not only was it 20C, there were 130 of them available for under 50C. So it was like very reasonable to slip an ools in, but that does only give us haste. And if you weren't using an ools, you would just drop haste. Again, in a higher budget version of this, I would probably be using an ashes rather than an ools. Um, but you get what you get when you're on one X from head to toe. So it was, this was very interesting. You can have a look at all of the gear. I, I will share this path of building again. And once more, I do not suggest people follow this like point for point or anything. This was a one X challenge from head to toe. You should not be building a second character in a league for a single exalt. Um, however, the idea is there and it was quite good um for for its budget it was insanely good i am quite happy with it so there's that if you made it all the way to the end of the video please do not forget to like and comment for the youtube algorithm gods that is how we make our money i will very much appreciate it and i will see everybody next time goodbye